We're back on The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield here in New York City talking to the big stars of Broadway. And there's one show you have to come see at Christmas, which is The Spectacular, which is on at the uh, Radio City Music Hall. And the big star, of course, is Alison Liebenberg. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. I wouldn't say I was the big star. I would say the Radio City Rockettes as a whole are the star of The Christmas Spectacular. <laughs> no, I'm always right, and I believe you're the big star. And it's nice to see you again, because it's been a year since we last spoke. And here you are, back in your fancy frocks again, looking delicious. And what's it like a year on to be back in the show? It's wonderful to be back. It's great to recreate everything that we produced last year for the 75th anniversary. We're just continuing on all the new and exciting things that are in the show. Why do you keep coming back? Because it's the show that's now become what you're known for and that kind of takes up kind of half of your year, doesn't it? It does. We rehearse for a couple of months for this um, leading up to it. But the Radio City Christmas Spectacular is such an amazing experience to be a part of and for people to come and see. It's part of everyone's holiday tradition here in New York and people travel all from all across the country to come and see us. It's a four show day again today and I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you get through it. You're looking fresh. Is that because it's still early on in the season or you have to sleep when you're not on stage? How do you do it? <laughs> we get lots of rest whenever we can. Yeah, we take good care of ourselves. And it's a huge crew. And just walking backstage up to do the interview today, I mean, there's literally hundreds of people around. How many people actually does it take to get this show on the road? I'm not entirely sure exactly, but I can tell you that the backstage choreography is just as intricate as everything that happens on stage. Everything is very carefully coordinated, and it really takes an army to get this show on the, up and running. So we spoke about this time last year. Then what happened? You did another couple of months in this, and then you went to... Oh, I did a brand new show in Houston, Texas this summer, which was amazing. It was good to be, you know, do some musical theatre. I like to do other things, you know, other performance things on the side. Any kind, I love to tap dance. Tap is my passion. And this particular show had a lot of tap in it. So I was very happy to do that this summer. And then turn around and get ready to come and do this again. Is this something that you kind of look forward to with great excitement because you know it means Christmas and it means New York and it means being here again? Yes, it's, you know, working with all my friends again. You know, it's like we're such a sisterhood here in the Rockettes. It's definitely something we all look forward to coming back to every year. And is it mostly the same crew? It changes from year to year. It depends. You know, all the Rockettes are very varied in their day-to-day -day life. Some are moms, some are in real estate. So, you know, some people take a year out to do things and quite often we see the same faces year after year, which is great. Now, we spoke last year about how do you become a rocket, and it is a huge checklist of things to tick, isn't it? You have to be a certain height, you have to have a certain look. There's no room for a clinically obese girl in the chorus line, is there really? Well, we have to be between five foot six and five foot ten and a half, and we have to be really good at ballet, tap, and modern dance. And you have to be, you know, you have to be very quick at picking up choreography, and you have to keep training throughout the year to maintain that standard. You can't just take a break and then expect to jump right back in. We're training year round. Round. And do you love Christmas? Because this is a Christmas show from the minute it opens to the minute it ends. It's about the magic of Christmas and bringing that alive for the kids and the families as well. It's funny. You think you would get tired of it, but I don't. You look out into the audience and you see people's faces. I mean, just this morning I visited a school. Um, where they'd had a competition for kids. They'd written an essay and they won tickets to come and see the show. And to go, get to go out and visit those children and just see the joy that it brought to them, that makes it all worthwhile. And you really are one of the old-fashioned showbiz lot here that every show has to be your first because people are paying good money to come and see it and they need the show as if it was your first time you'd ever done it and as if you loved it as much. That's hard, isn't it, when you're doing show after show, four shows a day. By the end of the week, you literally must be exhausted. It is hard to keep up the standard, but that's what we're known for. Every show, we take on a fresh approach. You know, we know that these people have paid to come and see us and we want to give them as good a show as we can every single time. And how does the show change year on year? Do they tweak it? Because I know last year was a very special year. Do they change it every year? Are there certain things that are different? Not always, but this year we're continuing the 75th celebration. So we still have all the brand new elements that were in last year. There's the fireworks on the stage when the New York, um, when the Rockets ride the New York City tour bus. It's, that's an amazing number. It's called New York at Christmas. And then there's Let Christmas Shine, which when the Rockets come out, they're all bedazzled in Swarovski crystals. It's beautiful. 
beautiful. And we should describe what you're wearing now. True New York showbiz, isn't it? Yes, what I'm wearing has a big white fur collar and it's red velvet. It's, you know, a very, the very epitome of a New York Christmas rocket outfit. And are you allowed to leave the building like this? I think you'd earn a fortune, you know, standing on corners, you know, getting tips, <laughs> uh, photographs and things like that. I wasn't meaning anything crude. Oh, <laughs> no, it is, it is great. Like when we sometimes go out into the street, even on our way to events, the reactions that we get on the street are incredible. Because you're all so gorgeous. What is it like backstage with the camaraderie between the girls? I mean, you have to become a team because you're living with them virtually for months on end, aren't you? Absolutely. We have great camaraderie. We get along so well. We have a lot of fun as well. That keeps us going throughout the season. And for those who don't remember last year, tell us your story because you're from Britain and you've made it over here, which must mean you're an extraordinary talent. Oh, well, thank you. I started dancing at the Central School of Dance in Norwich, and that's where I grew up and went to school. And then my it was my second professional job that brought me over to the States. It was a touring show. And I toured with that for about three years. And during that time, I met my husband, who was a stagehand on the show. His family happened to live in the New York area. So we moved back here when we came off the road. And we thought we'd see, you know, how things worked in New York. And I got very, very lucky. I auditioned <laughs> for about a year straight. I mean, it wasn't easy. It's just not easy in the city. There's so much competition. And then I got my break in the show 42nd Street on Broadway. And that was, that, was, that was a dream come true. And then this happened. And to, you know, be a part of the Radio City Christmas Spectacular, it's, it's just an honor for a Brit to be part of such an American tradition. Well, it really is, because on two levels, one, because they've got the pick of the crop, haven't they? They've got 250 million people to drag from, and they're going to find a great talent there. And then to take somebody from out of the States, they've got to have a good reason to do that. Yeah, well, I think being a rocket, I mean, there are so many attributes. You have to have the precision and the ability to pick up choreography very quickly. It's, it's definitely a special talent you have to have to be a part of, a, of the Radio City Rockettes. And I'm sure most people have seen it on the internet or seen the posters, but you all literally stand in a line and you're very famous for those line scenes where you have to do the choreography together and the kicks and all of that. And it really is within a millisecond of each other. I mean, you're just so brilliant on stage. How long does that take to perfect? And is that working together and knowing each other? Yes, absolutely. It it takes, you know, first to get in sync. It's almost like we feel each other as a whole when we get in the line. So when we first start rehearsals, we're all getting to know each other. And then gradually, the more and more we dance together, we just gel and we it's like we're dancing as one person. I mean, it really is a spectacle to come and see. Um, we, we are the world number one precision dance team. And to see that incorporated in such an amazing Christmas entertaining show, it's, it's well worth a trip. And the ovation at the end is like no other. I mean, it's a huge theatre for a start, isn't it? It is. It seats 6,000 people. I mean, there's just nothing like it. It's beautiful. The architecture in the theatre itself is stunning. Um, it's been recently refurbished, all to original standards. Um, it, it's just magnificent. I mean, and when you're entertaining 24,000 people a day, you really are a rock star, aren't you? You're up there with the biggest and the best. How does that feel, knowing that every day thousands upon thousands of people are seeing you? I don't know. It's it's kind of overwhelming, really. I mean, I don't really think about that every single day. I mean, certainly I'm seeing the audiences, but I'm not, you know, I'm not feeling like I'm a rock star every day. You know, it's not that kind of feeling. It's just nice to be able to know that you're providing happiness for people during the holidays. Well, Alison, finding out that you're married has broken my heart for a start. Where do we go from here? I mean, this is the second year. Do I bother asking you back next year? This is the big question, isn't it? Oh, please do. I love seeing you and I love talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much and good luck with the rest of the shows. Have you got a calendar on your wall of how many are left? Because I think I'd probably do that. I do, but it's more to keep track of the shows and the people that are coming. <laughs> yeah. How many have we done and how many have we got left? I think we're at about 30 right now. I think, and I think there's like another hundred and something to go. <laughs> well, good luck with it, and uh, keep strong and keep fit, because you can't be all during this show, can you? No, you can't, and it would be great if people could come out and see us. You can get tickets at RadioCityChristmas.com. And it's on at the world-renowned Radio City Music Hall, which is just a beautiful venue, huge venue, and uh, a great intimate Christmas show. And thank you again, Alison, for talking to me. Thank you so much.